What we're going to be going over here is a fair value hedge as an interest rate swap. And what we mean by an interest rate swap, this is where you convert from a fixed interest rate on your debt to a variable interest rate. And so in these terms here, look at Corp A here where they issue some bonds or it could be a notes payable here and just say they had $5 million worth at the fixed interest rate here of 8% per year. And so they sell the bonds to these bond investors and they're going to have to pay a fixed interest rate here of 8% to the bond investors here. And at the same same time corporation A enters into this interest rate swap contract and they enter into with another party here let's just call it the swap counterparty here and the swap counterparty here is willing to pay the corporation A the fixed interest rate here so uh, of 8% so corporation A is going to receive a fixed interest rate of 8% on these bonds that they issued here uh, and it would be paid by the swap counterparty here and at the same time here the agreement is that corporation a will pay the variable interest rate. Whatever the variable interest rate is, Corporation A is going to pay that variable interest rate to the swap counterparty here. So what they've done here is they've converted this um, fixed interest rate on the bonds to uh, the variable interest rate. And if you look at it closely, you'll see how it works here. Okay, so let's go and look at our example here. Um, this is where Corp A has $5 million worth of 8% fixed rate here of a notes payable here we'll use a notes payable because then we don't have to work worry about a bond amortization and so forth but okay so they can issue these uh, uh, notes payable here at eight percent five million dollars worth and they're going to convert it into a variable rate by entering a two-year interest rate swap okay so and also this is where they're going to designate this interest rate swap as a fair value hedge so this is what we have for our uh, numbers here that we're going to be looking at. So two things we're going to have to deal with is this variable interest rate here and also the fair value of the swap here and also the fair value of the note or the debt that we have here and that's going to be based on some market appraisal. So we're going to look at some dates here. We're going to uh, be paying um, and the interest rate here based on the, what they call the LIBOR, the variable rate is going to be worse based on the LIBOR percentage here and that's a, a, a assessed every six months here on this note here. So we're just looking here at here it's going to actually we're looking at um, the fixed rate here is going to be 8% but we've got the LIBOR rate here the variable rate here is less than that here and then we've also shown here the um, fair value of our swap contract here and that's all based on that interest percent uh, interest rate here and same f deal here for our note our debt here the fair value again that's based on the interest rate here and that's a market appraisal here so those are the numbers that are given here so the first thing that we have to deal with is this interest rate so let's look at how we'd handle this semi-annual annual swap settlement as they call it so look at our swap contract here on 630 here so what we have on our swap receivable that's where we're going to receive that fixed interest rate here of eight percent so again we're fixed rate here is eight percent versus the LIBOR rate here uh, that will be the variable interest rate so uh, for our 630 date here the eight percent fixed rate here times that five million dollars worth of notes for a half a year here that's two hundred thousand dollars and then uh, that's what we're going to have our swap on our receivable here and then our payable that's at the LIBOR or the variable rate here and that's that first six months here seven percent interest times the five million dollars here for half a year for hundred seventy five thousand dollars that's what we're going to have to pay so comparing that to what we're going to receive two hundred thousand less our payable amount here 175 we're going to have a cash settlement here on this uh, swap contract here of $25,000 so that's what we're going to receive here Corp A is going to receive a cash settlement of $25,000 so now looking at our next date here just to see how that works here so looking at our 1231 date well we have to go back and look at the seven and a half percent interest for that period here so that's our variable rate here based on uh, LIBOR interest rate here so again our swap receivable that's the what we're going to receive at the fixed rate here of eight uh, percent that five million that's that two hundred thousand here that we calculated and then payable at the LIBOR or the variable rate that was that seven and a half percent variable rate here five million dollars for half a year a hundred eighty seven thousand five hundred uh, dollars here so that's what we're gonna to have to pay here versus what we have receivable of two hundred thousand again 
we have a positive cash settlement here. So uh, Corp A is going to receive $12,500 in cash here. So that's how you work with your swap contracts here. You have to determine at each period here the uh, what receivable you have here based on the fixed interest rate and then you have to compare it to the payable amount that you're going to be paying at the variable interest rate. And the difference gives you uh, in this case we have a positive cash settlement here because the variable rate was less than the fixed rate in both cases. Okay so now let's go up and let's look at how we'd record this here. So again we're just going to be looking at our semi-annual interest expense here, the cash settlement and this swap contract. So okay we're going to have our cash account here and interest expense. So all we're going to be looking at here is uh, the this cash settlement here versus our interest expense. So we, again our cash for our fixed interest rate debit or credit that or reduce cash for two hundred thousand and then interest expense we debit that here for two hundred thousand dollars that's for that 630 period here that first period and then this is the key here when we settle that that cash settlement we would have received twenty five thousand dollars here that was based on that seven percent variable interest rate and then what we go and we reduce our interest expense credit our interest expense on our income statement here by twenty five thousand dollars so that's how that cash settlement works here you, whatever cash you received here uh, based on that variable interest rate and the fixed interest rate you uh, would reduce your interest expense by that amount here. And then same for the next period. We had that next period $200,000, the fixed amount that we have to pay on our notes payable here. And then we'd credit our debit or increase our interest expense by 200000 And then we had that cash settlement again. That was based on that 7.5% interest rate. We would have received that $12,500 for cash. And then we again, we reduce our interest expense on our income statement by that $12,500. $1,500. Okay, so you see what's going on here with our cash settlement. And in both cases here, we didn't have to, we receive cash rather than had to pay out any cash. If we, if the variable rate was greater than the uh, fixed rate here, then we would have ended up with a greater interest expense because we'd have to pay out some cash. But in this case, our variable rate was less than our fixed rate in both cases, so we ended up with uh, net cash gain here and by that we rec uh, reduce our interest expense uh, based on the swap contract. Okay so next thing we have to deal with is we have to and we're gonna just look at it here we're gonna be dealing with this uh, swaps fair value here versus the notes fair value and let's look at what we're gonna be doing there so we entered a swap contract at the same date we issued the notes payable the debt here and this is where special accounting uh, is you report the fair value of your swap and your debt here, your note in this case here, on the balance sheet and any unrealized gain and loss goes to income on the income statement. So however you'd normally handle this note or this debt here, depending on what type of security it is, if it's available for whatever it is, in this case, Every, when you're with these swap contracts, this special accounting where you report the fair value of your uh, your swap here and your debt here, and note in this case on the balance sheet, and then any unrealized gain loss goes through the income statement on, on your income statement here. So let's look at what we're looking at here. So what we're going to have is we'll start with our note here. Uh, this is where, uh, it, they, again, these are based on a market appraisal here, but they're really tied into this interest rate that we're talking about our variable interest rate so that a uh, variable interest rate here affects the market appraisal here uh, for our swaps fair value and our note or our debts fair value so this is what we have to deal with uh, when we're talking about that special reporting we have to report the fair value here on our on for our, our swap and our note here or our debt here and then any unrealized holding gain or loss based on changes here in our on our fair value. Okay, so let's start with this note here. We had five million dollars here, so we credit our note here. That's when there was issued here uh, for a notes payable here as a liability here for five million dollars. Now we come down to our next period here in 630x2. The note goes down to four million nine hundred thousand dollars because the interest rate goes up here. So that's just the way the debt works here. Uh, interest rate increases, 
your debt fair value decreases. So uh, from five million to four million nine hundred thousand. So we had a hundred thousand dollar reduction here in our notes payable. So you debit or reduce your notes payable here uh, uh, on your balance sheet here for that fair value adjustment just for one hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So now the credit goes to in, in this case, in all cases, in unrealized holding gain in this case here of $100,000 here as a gain uh, as income on the income statement. So that's how it works here. When you're working with this, these swaps here and you're using them for hedge, uh, fair value hedge accounting, you this is what you always go to the unrealized holding a, a gain or loss here on the income statement. So, okay, so we credit it our unrealized holding gain here for 100,000 and then we debited or reduced our notes payable here for $100,000. Okay, so now let's deal with this swap here. Uh, swaps fair value was reduced by 100,000. Well, that makes sense here because our interest rate increased here from 7 to 7.5%, 7 so the, the swaps value actually drops by $100,000 because it loses value here. So moving down to our entries here our swap contract that again for a fair value adjustment well when it was entered here when we entered the contract here it had a zero value here but before we get into that I want to go back here one more time here when we're dealing with this notes payable here this increase our interest here from seven and seven and a half percent you increase the interest rate that reduces your debt that reduces your liability here so that was what I was getting at when I meant here when we had the increase in our interest rate so that's that's where it is now back to our swap contract here F the fair value adjustment again we at, at when we entered into the contract here uh, it has a zero value now is the key here it gone down a hundred thousand dollars so uh, again the swap contract it really starts out as an asset here on the on your balance sheet here so debits and credits uh, it's the asset here versus a liability for our, our notes payable or a debt here. So that's just check out your debits and credits here. So now comes the uh, that hundred thousand dollars. So reduct our swap contract is reduced here by a hundred thousand dollars. So on six thirty here, uh, the seven and a seven and a half percent increase in our interest rate here reduces the swap which increases the liability here. So that's actually going to be reported as a liability here uh, uh, on the um, when you do your reporting here. But for looking at our debits and credits here, our swap contract is reduced here by $100,000, which actually uh, increases the liability here. And then again, the reduction here in our swamp contract by $100,000 credit here, the debit goes to an unrealized holding loss in this case here, uh, and as part of income on our income statement, $100,000. So what we're looking at here, just for our first entry here, you're going to see that everything is being offset here. We had that uh, notes pay, well, our notes payable here uh, was reduced by $100,000 here, but our swap contract uh, credit here was also reduced by a hundred thousand dollars here but since one's an asset and one's a liability they're countering each other here but what we really look at is this un our our unrealized holding gains and losses here so for our notes payable we had that credit or our increase here by a hundred thousand dollars but then for the swap contract we had the debit amount here a reduction or a loss here uh, as an unrealized holding loss here of a hundred thousand dollars so our unrealized holding gain here for a hundred thousand dollars based on our note change in our notes payable here is offset by the unrealized holding loss here is part of income here but on our income statement here by a hundred thousand dollars based on the change in value fair value of the swap contract here so they offset each other so our uh, income our income statement our net effect is zero based on that first uh, first period here now if we go back and we look at our next period here again our notes payable in this case uh, it went from four million nine hundred thousand up to five million thirty thousand dollars and that's only because our interest rate actually decreases here for this period so in this case uh, because of the increase here uh, from five million the fair uh, from five million to five million uh, thirty thousand here is we had 
a $30,000 increase. So credit your notes payable here for $30,000. That increases your liability here and by $30,000. So credit here then goes to an unrealized holding loss in this case here on our income statement. Debit that here for $30,000. Now, if we go back and look at our swap uh, fair value here, again, we had an increase here of $30,000 in its fair value here because the uh, interest rate goes down, so that adds value to our swap uh, our swap. Uh, account here, $30,000. So going down to our swap, our fair value adjustment here, we would debit that here for $30,000. So this is an asset here. And so the point I want to make here before we go on here is that when we reduce this swap contract, the fair value adjustment here, that first period here for $100,000, again, that that was an increase in our interest rate that reduces the swap, but it increases the liability and that's how it would be reported in the financial statement just so you understand here reduction here in our swap contract actually increases our liability okay so back to our thirty thousand dollar amount here uh, on 12 uh, at that period here that acts as an asset account here debit our swap for thirty thousand and then going over to an unrealized holding gain here uh, it, it, that would be a gain here as part of income here on the income statement. Credit that here for $30,000. So essentially we've done the same thing here for our last period here. We had that unrealized holding loss here of $30,000 based on the notes payable adjustment here increased it up by 30000 That is offset by the unrealized holding gain here due to our swap contract here because our swap contract increased by 30,000 so our unrealized holding gain here uh, we had for $30,000 so the loss here unrealized holding loss here due to our notes payable is offset by the unrealized holding gain here of $30,000 uh, for our swap contract so what you're trying to do with these hedge contracts here is you're really trying to get as close as you can here where you can uh, you're offsetting any gains and losses here between your debt security here and that swap contract so that's what you're attempting to do here and it doesn't always work out that way but um, that's the way it's supposed to work here so this gain and loss are have to be offset here based on uh, the changes here between your liability here and your asset uh, the swap contract asset. So that's how you have to do it. And just remember here, everything is really keyed off that variable interest rate here that, we're, that we were looking up up over here, that variable interest rate. That determines what our swaps fair value would be here and also our debt, our note in this case, it's fair value. So again, these are numbers I've just used here, but they would be some market appraisal numbers that you'd have to do here. So we've taken care of our hedge here between this note here, our debt, and our swap contract. And we've done that here where we converted our fixed interest rate here and our notes payable to a variable interest rate. And we went through that and we looked at how we uh, uh, recorded our interest expenses and, and our cash account based on that swap settlement deal. So this will summarize it here when we're dealing with these uh, a fair value hedge here as an interest rate swap.